trying to pet into Fred Gamble's help. Sometimes there was an idea that war can be good for an economy. And an example of this could be, say, the United States during the Second World War, the Korea War and Vietnam War. Because when there was a big conflict, uh, the American economy vastly increased. The government spent more money on munitions and the army, so there was a big increase in demand. The economy recovered, unemployment fell, and living standards improved during these uh, wars, especially in the 50s and 60s. So some companies also did very well, those making the uh, munitions and uh, armaments. And people who found employment in the army or in munitions uh, were doing much better. But we have to be very careful because there's a few things to point out. The first one is that although the war in one sense benefited the American economy, it's important to remember the war didn't take place on American soil. It took place in Europe and then in uh, Korea and Vietnam. So a lot of the devastation of a war took place outside America. So America got the um, war without any costs happening on its soil. The second thing is that it is true that the Second World War kind of kick-started the American economy and got it out of the Great Depression. But it's very important to remember that there would have been many better ways to kick-start the economy and get the economy out of recession. You know, rather than building an army, you could have built new hospitals or schools, Keynesian demand management. And the same effect could have been had if the American government had earlier decided to seek full employment rather than allowing mass unemployment to continue into the uh, late 1930s. The second thing is, there's an interesting uh, idea in economics called the broken window fallacy. Suppose that somebody breaks a window, then you have to pay a glazier to come in and fix your window. So the glazier's happy, he's got an increase in income, and he goes and spends it at the local pub. So it seems that there's been an increase in economic activity from this broken window. The glazier's got more income, the pub's got more income, and the economic activity is increasing. However, it is a fallacy to assume this broken window has increased economic welfare. Why? Well, because you spent £100 on fixing your broken window, you didn't spend £100 on buying a new city, a new TV. So other companies who are not aware of it lost out because rather than buying something productive and something new, you were fixing a problem. So did your welfare increase? No, it's lower. Because as far as you're concerned, you went back to where you started from. You spent this money, but you haven't anything to show for it. Now, the glazier may be better off, but overall, society isn't better off because a glazier has benefited at the expense of the TV shop or the uh, furniture shop. So... If we spend a lot of money on a war and then a lot of money on reconstructing after a war, this shows there's a big increase in GDP. But is this an increase in economic welfare? No, because we're just creating destruction and then trying to fix it. Rather than have the war, we could have built new hospitals, new schools, new roads, something that would have had improved society rather than uh, fighting to stay where we are. So GDP can be misleading. You know, GDP isn't a measure of welfare. You know, just because you have a big oil crisis and oil spills over the sea and you spend a lot of money cleaning it up, it doesn't mean that we're better off. It's better to minimise damage, minimise conflict, and spend our limited resources on other 